Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and I am here a day early this round because today I'm solving a Bill Murphy puzzle instead of our usual Philip Newman puzzle. Uh, Philip and I have switched days this round, so you will see Philip tomorrow. So this puzzle is called Big Goose Energy. It's by uh, Bill Murphy, and it is a Little Killer XV pair of Sudoku. So we have normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine, once each in each row, each column, and each outline through by three region. And then also there are two variant rules here. So there are some clues outside of the grid with arrows, and those indicate the sum of the digits along the marked diagonal. So for example, these two digits, because there's a five with an arrow out there, have to sum to five. There are also some X's and some V's in the grid, and those tell you if there's a V that the two digits on either side have to sum to five, as in V in Roman numerals. And if there's an X, the two digits on either side have to sum to 10, which is X in Roman numerals. And not all possible X's or V's are necessarily given in the grid, so it's possible that there are other pairs of digits somewhere else in the grid that do sum to 5 or 10, but that haven't been marked with an X clue or a V clue. And those are the rules. Let's go ahead and solve this Bill Murphy puzzle. So this looks like a straightforward place to start. So we have a 4, and the only way to to do a sum of four and two cells if the digits both see each other is for those to be one and three. And because of these V clues, these two cells have to contain two and four. Now two plus four is six, and so this sum is 14. So the remainder to get to 14, when we're starting with a sum of six, is going to be eight. So there's our first digit. These two digits sum to five. So those can only be one, two, three, or four. And because of the X clues, these can only be six, seven, eight, or nine. Now, if these sum to 5 and these both sum to 10, so their total is 20, that tells you that these two must sum to 15. But the total here is 18, so the remainder is going to be a 3. So we can eliminate 3 from both of those. But now, because these still have to sum to 5, they must be 1 plus 4. That's the only remaining possible way to make a sum of 5. Okay. So that gives us some headway here. We still have an X clue in this region. And that, at this point, because it can't be 1 and 9, can't be 4 and 6, and can't be 3 and 7, must be 2 plus 8. 16 in two cells is 7 plus 9. Therefore, these are 1 and 3, which sum to 4. So to make a total of 8 for the little killer clue, this is going to have to be a 4. In addition, because we have this 3, we now know that this is the 1 this is the 3. And that kind of bounces back up here and very elegantly resolves this, which in turn resolves this. And now this 2 here tells us that this 2, 8 goes this way around. And even, um, we can even go further. We need a 7 in this region. It can't go down here because there's a 7 in region 9 already. So we're going to place it there. Let's see if we can get some of these. So 2 and 8 can't go in those cells. So they must go here and here, and these have to be 5 and 6. Okay, these cells will contain 15, so there's only 6, 7, 8, or 9. These are both x's, so their total sum is 20, so if we subtract off the 15, we get 5. So these two sum to 5. But because these two sum to 5 and we have this 13 clue, we know this is 8. And that resolves this. We can also eliminate 8 here, but because we still need a sum of 15, those now have to be 6 plus 9. The 4 is going to disambiguate which way around those go. And now there's only one way to fill in this remaining x clue. It is as 3 and 7. So now we need 2 and 5 to finish the region, which finishes this. And I bet we could also finish this last corner box if I know Bill. Those can't be fives, this can't be a nine, that can't be a seven, this can't be six, seven, or nine, so that's my five. And sure enough, Sudoku carries us through. That is how we finish our last corner box. So let's see what we can do with the other regions. These two cells sum to five, but this one can't be one, two, or four, so the only remaining possible digit that's low enough is a three. These two cells sum to five. 
This one can't be one, two, or four. So the only remaining one that's low enough is a three. So now two and three are here and here, so we can't place two or three in these cells, so they go here. Therefore, these two pairs of Bs that sum to five have to be one and four in both cases. So those will go there. So now these will be seven and nine to finish the row. And these will be eight and nine to finish their row. These will be five and six to finish their row. And finally, these are one and eight to finish their row, which go that way around because of the one right here. These cells to finish their row will be four and six, which are resolved by this four. And these will be five and seven. And this five here also resolves this. The seven we placed a moment ago resolves this. We should be able to finish these columns possibly. Let's see what we can do here. So we're gonna have an eight and a nine to finish this column and a six and a seven to finish this column. And that doesn't quite do it. So let's take a look at the left and right sides of the grid. So to finish this column, we still need three, seven, and nine. So this needs to be one, three, or seven, but it can't be three or seven. Those are already used. So that is a one, nine pair. And that's going to give us our eight and our nine. Over here on the right side, we need two, five, and six. That can't be a five. So this is either two plus eight, which doesn't work, or six plus four, which does work. And that is going to resolve this. And now our last two digits in the row are two and three. The order is resolved by what's already present in the columns. Here we need a one and a seven. And that's going to take care of the pencil marks that we already have in the grid. We still need an eight and a nine to finish this region. Those are resolved. In this row, we're going to need a five and an eight. And in this row, we need a four and a six. And that is how you solve Bill Murphy's Big Goose Energy. I enjoyed solving a Bill puzzle, a little bit of a change of pace for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Solve it yourself with the link in the description below this video. And I will see you again in four days. Catch you later.